everyone! Happy Halloween! My name is Anne and I'm so excited because today we are going to be doing a Halloween themed artwork. I have it right here. Uh, we're going to be painting a spooky mansion on top of a hill with a skeleton fog fading in. So if you want to learn how to paint this piece, just keep watching! Alright, let's do this. So we're going to start by drawing a skull in the middle of the page and we're going to use this as an outline and a placeholder for the rest of our painting. So I'm using a 2 h pencil and I'm just quickly drawing an outline of a skull and then we're gonna use that to place the rest of our objects. Once you've finished your skull, go ahead and add a few colors to your palette. The colors that we're going to be using are purple, yellow, white, and black. And then later on, I'm going to be adding some green I will put all the colors in the description below. Here I have a size 12 Blick Scholastic Lime brush. It's a round brush. And then we're going to put some white in the upper corner of the skull. And then putting some yellow around it for a light spot on your painting. And then I've dotted some purple around and we're going to slowly build that up using X motions and gradually just adding more and more purple towards the outer edges to make it darker. adding the purple, focusing on the edges, and focusing on that crisscross motion. And add some water to help those colors move a little bit. in the corners making the outer edges of the painting darker and lighter in the center. And you, as you can tell I'm adding a good amount of water so go ahead and add some water and then during this step, you can actually add some darker purple to the bottom. I go in later and add in more, um, but if you just want to skip that step, go ahead and add some more purple at the bottom, making it a little bit darker. And then go ahead and create some horizontal lines going through, making it look more like a sky. I go in with a clean brush and I add the moon to our painting. Now I'm going in with the purple color and adding in the shape of our background, which is going to be mountains, and then filling that in with some black. I go in with the purple first in case I make a mistake or decide that I don't want anything, then I can just blend it into the background. And then I'm just blocking in the color of the mountains now, which is going to be pretty dark. It's going to be black, but not completely dark, so we're going to lighten it up in a minute. So this is where I add the green to our mountains. So 
So I drew that green line to map out where I want the mountains to end. And then I went and grabbed some white and dotted it along the mountains and blended it into the background. And then in our foreground, we're going to have some hills, which our haunted mansion is going to sit on top of, so I added some green. Also defining where our mountains start and end. And then here I added some more black and made the tops of the mountains a little bit more pointy. And then added a mountain to the left. And now here I'm adding some highlights to the mountains to show where the moonlight is reflecting off of them. So I just grabbed a little bit of white and mixed that off to the side and added the highlights. Now with a clean brush, I'm going back in with the purple and intensifying that color. And then you'll note here that I'm actually dragging the dark purple down a little bit farther. Which you can do this in the earlier step when we were doing the sky. And now I'm taking the black and adding some shadows onto the mountains as well. I'm going to blend the white, green, and purple together to start creating the hill that our spooky mansion is going to be sitting on. And the reason I'm adding purple is to create a little bit of darkness in the green without flattening it into the background. So here I am adding that light color and outlining the shape of my hills and just dragging that color all the way down to where I want my hills to end. And here I add in some black to really create some contrast and then I go back in with the lighter green and some white to get a little bit of a highlight 
on the hill. And then blocking in that color. And here you see me just filling in colors, adding some dark values and some light values and kind of switching back and forth, making sure everything blends, but at the same time pushing my values to create a more three-dimensional look. So now I'm going to take this size 4 angular brush. I'm using the black and I'm using the flat side of the brush to create the shape of this house. And then I zoom in just so you can see a little bit better. And just really defining the shape of the house. And then adding a roof. take some white on my brush and just carefully use the tip to create some windows. And then a door. And then using the edge of the brush with that white color, I lightly tap and add some highlights to the house. And then I buff those out. Go in with some yellow and add those to the windows. And then I go back on top with some white to really brighten up that white. And then I finish the shape of my house. Going back in with the black and just adding some final details. Adding some more windows. Going in with the yellow and then layering the white on top. highlights a little bit more intense defining the door a little bit more and then I go in and create a fence surrounding this creepy mansion <laughs> And here I'm not too worried about making sure my lines are perfectly straight because it's an old rundown fence so it'd be natural to have the fence caving in a little bit. So first I go in lightly with my colors and then I make them thicker and darker as I go. And then I add some horizontal lines to the fence. And then I actually decided that I wanted to add in a little path to the mansion, so I took this size 8 filbert brush and then I carefully filled in the path um, before the fence and then just lightly dragged it out. Um, you can definitely add the path before the fence um, or not add the path at all but this is what I did because I thought of it after. <laughs>
Yeah, and you just go through it kind of lightly and then build up as you go. And then this path also fades away, it's really far, so you can just barely see it. And here I just added some white onto my brush and went back through and added a few highlights. So this is the background of the piece. You can end your painting here if you'd like, or continue watching to learn how to layer a creepy faded skull on top of this painting. So to start with the skull, we're going to take this size 6 round brush. Okay, so I'm going to dip my brush into the black paint and start by darkening the corners and filling in the negative space to create the outline of the skull. And then I pause here and grab a pencil and just lightly outline how far I want my black to come out and start blending into the rest of the painting. So I know not to draw it too far. I start lightly dragging down the black towards the mouth and then filling that in. And I'm adding more details like the eyes, cheekbones, and nose. And I'm only creating the left side of the face because I want it to look like this spooky skeleton cloud mist is kind of floating in from left to right. And going back in with a clean filbert brush, I'm going to start adding some white and gray highlights. So just mix a little white in with our gray. And the brush is pretty wet at this point, so just go ahead and lightly add in some highlights. And then I go back in with my fluffy round brush and buff out that white. And I go back in with water to help the colors blend. So it's really a combination of paint and water that you just add until you get an outcome that you like. So here I'm taking some white paint mixed with a good amount of water and I'm drawing vertical lines and these are going to highlight right above the teeth. And then <clears throat> with more white paint, I'm gonna go back in and add the shape of each tooth. go back in with my fluffy round brush and lightly buff in some more white. And 
As you can see, I'm using a zigzag motion to create a fade and blend it with the black. And during this step, I add some black paint to my round brush and fill in those corners as my final step. And that completes this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and happy Halloween.